What about the fact that you've been coaching? You know, like you haven't been blocking yourself, but you've been like sitting on the sideline. When I sat out for a while, I feel like I learned a lot, and I came back and I was like, I got like mental reps in at least. Yeah. You know. So do you think that kind of applies? Like you've been coaching girls yeah. at Pepperdine. Yeah, absolutely. I would tell anybody that the year that I spent after I graduated coaching at Pepperdine did more for my game than uh, an entire season uh, playing or practicing because of how I was able to look at the game differently, getting those, I love like mm-hmm. those mental reps in yeah. and it allowed me to have s- sort of this um, perspective on the court I was able to carry it with me and realize and kind of pick up on more patterns and have a better perspective of like the flow of the game as far as two people playing together. Whereas if you just play and play and play yourself, you only have your perspective Mm -hmm. really. And I've coached blockers before and said like, yeah, you need to do this with your arms, like this step, like this lineup, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm out there making the same errors. (laughs) Like, wow, this is way harder than it looks. (laughs) (laughs) Like I have so much more empathy now for those players that I've, been like coaching and I think it's going to help my ability to coach that position to have been in that in that experience personally you can be like listen I know how hard it is exactly (laughs) you can start start with that first yeah (laughs) that might have been missing on the blocking side before I know you maybe saw me play in Chicago and I missed it but listen I've learned since then and this is what you need to do yeah (laughs) something like that yeah It is a bummer when you have to knock out a player that you would really see, like you would really love to see succeed, but I do have to admit that I love the trash talk element of it. I love not like the aggressive demeaning like banter, but I like the clever witty like Mm one-liners. Like I think Skylar made a great play last year in the Hermosa qualifier. I was like, I taught her that, (laughs) you know? So I love that dynamic and you can be like that when you're playing with people that you're comfortable with. And I think that lends itself super well when you're playing against players that you've coached or playing against someone that has coached you because you're so comfortable with them. And so I think that the game, the talk in the game gets way more fun. After playing with Katie, she has taught me um, a lot on the mental side about like the confidence to know that you can win. And I've seen that in her and learned that from her on the court in a way that I hadn't really experienced it before. And it's hard to explain, but she gets on the court and she wins. And to the point where we can be down three points at the end of a set, and I'm not worried because, like, Katie wins. Mm -hmm. She makes those plays at the end, and it's been really cool to be able to learn from her and adapt that into my own game to know, like, with that internal confidence. Like, people say it all the time, like, you're never out of the game, a lot of game left, like, that's why we play. Like, it's... But it's all just words until you feel it. And right. playing with Katie, I've been able to like feel what that feels like, and it's been incredible. Basically, I think that if you don't have fun playing this game, then why are you playing this game? I really don't see any mm-hmm. other like viable reason to be playing professional beach volleyball unless you have fun playing beach volleyball. There's not enough money in it. There's not right. the fame you know, that you're not going to be recognized walking on the street. If that's what right. you're playing for, you're not going to get that. And so if you can't have fun, like why are you doing it? Yeah. So right. it's been fun it's been awesome to play with Katie because she gets that, that if it's not fun, why are we doing it? But I think that just the ability to push my body and to work really hard is my favorite part. I love getting to the end of a rally, like a long rally where you're like sandy and you've grinded out and like a bunch of one-handed scramble plays and win or lose, I can't come up from that, like a rally like that, not smiling because Mm -hmm. that is so fun. (laughs) Just working and like leaving it all on the court and even just one rally, I think is my favorite part. She had a coach with her, Jason, who has worked with her for a little bit, I think the last couple of years up in Santa Barbara, and afterwards, we, I guess our finish was the 17th, um, and he was saying, like, you got a 7th here last year with Carissa, and you were not this happy. And so it was interesting to see that someone else could kind of weigh in on mm-hmm. our partnership and, like, the potential that we had just because of our chemistry and, like, the way that we can play together. Um and that I could kind of help foster that enjoyment of the game for her just like she was doing it for me. So, yeah, would not have expected that we would finish out the season together, but couldn't be any happier that we are. Yeah. So, something huge in that ability to just take a huge risk, to take a huge, to make a huge move, to make a random crazy play and mm-hmm. know that, like, I'm not going to turn and see my partner rolling her eyes at me, you know? Like, she's going to be like, all right next ball like let's side out like love the thought love the idea 
like my mentality on it has changed from like, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, I'm feeling so much pressure, to realizing that I'm gonna feel pressure every single time I step mm-hmm. on the court, to see how fast I can break through it and get comfortable on the court, whether mm-hmm. it's like until the technical timeout or whether it's the first 10 points or whether it's the first side change. Like if I'm feeling comfortable by the second side change, I'm like, okay, we're cruising. And so that's like the little competition or game that I play with myself in regards to pressure is just acknowledging that I'm going to be nervous every time I step on the court and seeing how fast I can get comfortable and break through those nerves and acknowledging that it's, it doesn't mean that anything's wrong that I'm nervous. It's probably good because it means I care so much. Yeah. Um, and it's going to give me that like extra effort and the extra work, but just being able to like kind of harness it and use it as soon as possible. I have always like been more on the modest side when I've competed in my faith, my religion, it's really like modesty standards are really encouraged. And Mm -hmm. so when I was growing up, um, my mom will say, strongly discouraged me from wearing bikinis when I would play, um, which was, uh, it didn't always go over very well because one pieces were not coming back into style 10 years ago, like they are now. So I felt like such a sore thumb sticking out in my (laughs) one piece bathing suit. Um, but somewhere along the lines, I was able to really kind of embrace it as a unique thing that helped me stand out. Um, and I, I love that they're coming back into style, right. um, but I also love that, that I get to be an example to other girls that you don't have to wear a bikini Totally. to feel confident and comfortable and to feel beautiful. Um, you can wear whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable in, and you don't have to like conform or wear whatever like all yep. these other girls are wearing um because sometimes it pushes the limits and I think that it's like super revealing <laughs> totally. and super uncomfortable to 